conflict in a strategically significant region has drastically altered the trajectory of the ongoing war. Specifically, cities within the Donetsk and Luhansk explosion zones have emerged as pivotal strategic locations in this protracted conflict. Among these, the cities nestled in the Donbas region, including Bakhmut and Vul, have been identified as crucial defensive strongholds. One of the primary goals for both sides involved in the conflict has been to gain control over these critical cities. The Ukrainian territory expansion efforts have focused significantly on securing Bakhmut, recognizing its paramount importance in the region. Unfortunately, the situation in Bakhmut and its neighboring city, Vadar, has deteriorated over time. Despite the unwavering dedication of the Ukrainian army to safeguard these cities, the Russian army persists in its relentless pursuit to occupy them. The escalating tensions in Bakhmut and Vadar underscore the continued complexity and challenges faced by both sides in this ongoing conflict. The struggle for control over these cities persists, and the situation remains a central point of contention in the broader war strategy. Within the Kremlin, Russian President Vladimir Putin and his administration have framed these defensive actions as significant military victories. Putin's directives to military leaders at the conflict's outset to adopt a defensive stance have contributed to this narrative. This approach has given rise to the perception that, despite strong support from Western nations, the Ukrainian counteroffensive has encountered limited success on both tactical and operational fronts. Alexander Kovalenko, a military and political analyst, has shed light on Russia's challenges in maintaining control over the region. One critical issue he highlighted is Russia's resource limitations, exemplified by the depletion of supplies for the VTO coalition during the summer. This scarcity led to the relocation of a special air battalion from the Luhansk region to the south, where they sought to bolster defenses in response to mounting pressures. These developments underscore the intricate dynamics at play in this protracted conflict, where narratives and resource constraints intertwine with military strategies and geopolitical factors to shape the course of events in the region. The video footage provides compelling evidence of Ukrainian troops exhibiting remarkable prowess on the southern front. Ukraine's military achieved significant success in this region, and the Russian military leadership found itself somewhat paralyzed in the face of these Ukrainian triumphs. High-ranking Russian officers have suffered casualties, and Russia's military equipment has suffered significant losses at the hands of Ukrainian forces. Ukraine's ongoing efforts to dismantle numerous Russian artillery systems continue to diminish Russia's firepower significantly. According to the Ukrainian general staff, the conflict in the past week alone has resulted in the loss of 293 Russian artillery systems, this relentless reduction in Russian artillery assets has been monitored by organizations like OREX, an open-source intelligence monitoring group based in the Netherlands, which tracks military equipment, losses in Ukraine and Russia. One striking observation is the increasing presence of Western modern weaponry in the hands of Ukrainian forces, a factor that has played a pivotal role in their military successes. Notably, missile capabilities have become a prominent feature in Ukraine's arsenal. On another occasion, a Russian headquarters was obliterated, resulting in the loss of a substantial number of Russian officers, primarily due to HIMAR missiles. Ukrainian defense forces also managed to fend off and repel 62 Russian invaders, while simultaneously destroying 35 enemy military hardware warehouses. These developments underscore the evolving dynamics and continued resilience of Ukraine's military efforts in the ongoing conflict. Ukraine's top general has reported a significant achievement through an exchange of telegrams, revealing that Ukrainian Defense Forces artillery units successfully executed 949 firing missions the previous day, notably with frequent HIMAR attacks. This ongoing success underscores Ukraine's effectiveness in its mission to deplete enemy resources. In a recent attack, the toll on the Russian side was severe with 62 soldiers losing their lives, 127 individuals sustaining injuries, and one person being captured, indicative of the meticulous planning and lethal execution of the operation. The losses inflicted on the Russian military included the destruction of 35 military units, comprising a tank, 
six armored fighting vehicles, three artillery and mortar systems, a multiple launch rocket system, 15 unmanned aerial vehicles, eight motor vehicles, and a specialized equipment unit. Additionally, five ammunition depots in Russia were damaged due to freefall attacks in the previous October. Recent activities in the Melol area have gained attention, with footage circulating on the internet reportedly showing an attack on a Russian command station in the occupied Mapol region of southern Ukraine, situated within the Debas region. This victory stands as the latest testament to Ukraine's capabilities, notably with supplied American SPO artillery. Kyiv's security service played a crucial role by providing intelligence that enabled Ukraine's high-mobility artillery rocket system to execute a successful strike. These developments demonstrate Ukraine's continued determination and effectiveness, while Russia appears to be adapting and evolving its strategies in response to the ongoing conflict. In a decisive move, Troen launched a precision command post attack that resulted in the unfortunate loss of nine Russian soldiers, with eight fatalities and seven others sustaining injuries. The speed of information dissemination in the digital age allowed internet users to quickly share videos, seemingly captured by dronies operated by Ukrainian forces, depicting rockets striking the command center. These images were later analyzed by military experts, who determined that the attack occurred near the Melito province and the southern city of Bamud, situated approximately 22 kilometers northwest of Rennes. According to information published by the Ukrainian army, they claim to have obtained reliable intelligence from Russian security officials. This information indicates that the attack targeted the 7th Russian Airborne Division near the town of Bashu, while reactions to the attack among Russian media and officials varied. With some expressing their opinions and others advocating for inaction, the situation in Ukraine continued to evolve rapidly. Notably, the Ukrainian military has made substantial progress towards the Russian stronghold of Veroa in the Zapara Oblast, located in the south and southwest of Robotin. Observations from the past week have indicated the presence of Ukrainian mechanized troops in the western outskirts of Veroa, where they have sought to conceal themselves from the formidable presence of the Russian Dragon Army. According to Russian sources, Ukrainian troops initiated their assault on the city of Veroa on September 29th, utilizing armored vehicles in their offensive operations. These developments reflect the dynamic nature of the ongoing conflict in the region. According to the recently released JAOC war film, Ukrainian BMP Regiment infantry fighting vehicles were observed engaging in battle at the western entrance on September 28th. This strategic movement allowed Ukrainian troops to successfully dismantle the second of three lines of Russian military defenses, primarily concentrated in the southwest of Robotin. The fortress that had been under Russian control continued to witness intense clashes, while the Ukrainian army advanced methodically but steadily toward the captured supply center and railway junction in the rear. As a result, the distance between the headquarters of the talks and the current front line stands at approximately 22 kilometers. Should Ukrainian forces maintain their momentum and succeed in October in displacing the Russian army from their fortifications at Nuprapiva and progressing towards Russia's third line of rear defense, Russia may be compelled to deploy additional reserves to halt the Ukrainian advance. The Russian invaders plan to advance to the city of Adiva in Voar suffered a complete setback as the Russian army's tanks and armoured vehicles were entirely neutralized thanks to the well-executed strategy of the Ukrainian army. Tarnavsky, in his statement, emphasized the exceptional performance of their artillery and the unwavering dedication of every soldier in the trenches who continue to carry out their duties at the highest level. The Ukrainian army has maintained its stability in the workplace throughout, even in the face of reports of heavy losses resulting from Russian immigrant attacks in Iraq. The recent success of the primary missile and artillery units in the Air Force, which led to the transportation of tanks and armored personnel carriers belonging to the Russian occupiers, highlights the high level of training and naval capabilities of the Ukrainian army. Recorded data reveals substantial losses on the Russian side, with three 657 tanks and 7,083 armored combat vehicles lost since the outset of the conflict. Savannah Baladin, the Minister of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, 
highlighted the operation conducted in areas where Russian immigrants are situated, gradually expanding the strategic significance of these structures for both armies. This protection is largely attributed to the aviation capabilities of the Ukrainian Defense Forces, the impressive resilience and achievements of the Ukrainian Army, particularly in the BMOD and Viewer regions, have garnered worldwide attention as their steadfast resistance continues to influence the global stage.